Well, God bless you, saints. I'm Pastor Anthony Kazravi. You have gathered here for the last seven words of Jesus Christ. It's Holy Week. And so every night, beginning with our uh, Palm Sunday night evening experience, night one, we have addressed one um, word and or phrase that Jesus shared with us in his last moments here on earth. And uh, th these are pivotal words and phrases that, that Jesus is using uh, um, to guide his people to provide this, um, you know, last minute instruction that is so prophetic in each individual word that it carries an impact and a transformative experience for Christians who study it and reflect on it today, uh, 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 where you live and, and, and how you are maturing your faith. And that's why this is, uh, uh, the word is so powerful. Amen. And so let's pray and get into this uh, uh, as we dive into, uh, uh, again, the last seven words of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for this word, God. We thank you, Father, for all the sacrifices you went through, Father, the, the greatest sacrifice of all, Lord, that was paid when the Father called for the Son to lay down his perfect and holy life so that we could connect with you again, Lord. We thank you for that. We thank you that you love us so that you are willing to sacrifice everything for us, Lord. May that be recognized, appreciated, honored, and praised right now. In the name of Jesus, connected through the Spirit of God, we dive into your word, Lord. Holy Spirit, you have complete control. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. All right, let's get into it. So a um, little bit of recap, and then we'll get into to, 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 to tonight's word. Um, we have addressed um, the, Jesus asking for the forgiveness of those who did not know what they are doing. That is night one. We then uh, 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 progressed and, and talked about the, 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 the malefactors, right? There, there is one man being crucified with Jesus who is, is insulting him the same way everyone else is. And yet there is one that recognizes him as Lord and 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 is um, asking him to be remembered as he enters the kingdom in paradise. Right. Uh, um, the, the, these particular stages, again, as we go through the different nights and, and tonight's is, isn't any different, um, they, they, they carry a weight that not only is experienced at the time that Jesus is speaking it, but they are prophetic words. It means that there is weight and power that exists as these particular phrases of Jesus uh, echo in the spirit today. Last uh, 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 night was, was, was powerful because it talked about kingdom assignments. Jesus told his mother, mother, behold thy son. He was referring to the disciple John, uh, 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 um, son, there here is, behold thy mother. We, we talked about kingdom assignments and spiritual connections and the relationships that exist because Jesus called for the saints and the believers to establish now the body of Christ. And so this togetherness is massive. Um, t tonight is interesting because we, we now will see in Matthew 27, 45 through 47, uh, Jesus is speaking directly to the Father. And th there is uh, uh, um, not only uh, this particular phrase being prophetic in that it is echoed uh, from uh, um, uh, uh, scripture but it is also uh um jesus sharing this 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 moment uh, in matthew 20 uh 7 45 now from the sixth hour there was darkness right this is actual physical darkness the land is dark over all the land unto the ninth hour so for three hours there is darkness and about the ninth hour jesus cried with a loud voice saying eli eli lama sabachni this is to say my god my god why hast thou forsaken me? Some of them that stood there when they heard that said, this man calleth for Elias. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken 
me. I, I, I don't know if you can understand or feel the, the, the impact uh, of loss. And we, we truly do not know what it is in our generation to live in a world where the spirit of God is, is in um, non-existence. Um, there will come a time. There will come a time where uh, darkness as it is um, expressed, which is the removal of the presence of God, um, this particular darkness will be experienced. Uh, when those who face judgment are, are cast aside and, 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 and thrown into the lake of fire, that particular place, what we know is hell, what we know is Hades, right? Uh, 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 um, this particular place is known as a, a location, a spiritual uh, 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 realm where the presence of God is not, right? Uh, uh, th this is interesting because at some point we we associate darkness sometimes with hard times right we we view darkness as as sometimes an emotion rather than understanding that this is a a spiritual implication now at the time that jesus is being crucified there is actual a a physical darkness and 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 what should be the brightest point of the day right uh, uh where the sun is hanging straight over everyone it, it is dark and after three hours of darkness, we find Jesus crying out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And, 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 and at some point, the idea is, what is happening with the physical darkness? And what is it that Jesus is saying? And then what, what does that mean for us today, right now? Thousands of years later, why would we take the time to study this word, reflect on it, and believe that this is somehow going to bring me closer to Jesus? Let, let's let let's let's get into this. Um, we we need to talk about physical darkness. Physical darkness is really important because at some point it helps to establish what we understand. Um, is happening when anything anytime we go to understand the spiritual significance and 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 the bible does this really well we we have plenty of parables um that that, that talk about darkness we have different teachings that tell us about the kingdom and and they teach us but they do it based upon agriculture or they do it by building and jesus will say you know the kingdom of god is like this man who was looking for a field and the kingdom of god is like this and, and then e e even apostles later as they are establishing the the new church are speaking and sharing uh, uh, uh you know mysteries of the kingdom with regards to uh why it is that there was old testament scripture saying a certain thing and why there was a uh, uh, darkness at a certain point and then we get into even the, the 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 metaphysical darkness, right? Why is it that there is darkness inside of man? Why is it that sometimes there is darkness inside of our heart? Uh, all of this is important to understand as we talk about darkness because it helps us kind of understand what is it that Jesus is expressing when he's saying, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? What is happening inside of this darkness, right? This darkness is happening for three hours, and this is significant because at some point I would tell you, uh, um, God moves in systems, right? He, he is such a, a systematic uh, uh, um, God. He creates things. Uh, um, he understands, uh, we understand seasons because of him. We understand cycles because of God. And, and all of this knowledge and experience is written throughout the word. So when you become a studier of the word, you, you become a studier of systems and cycles and understanding um, how God uh, 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 reacts to certain things and, 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 and what his spirit loves and hates and, and, and who the character of God is as our father as you continue to study the word. Uh, uh, when you understand other experiences and, and, and the people of God with God, when you understand how God has treated enemies, when you understand how God has, uh, 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 um, uh, uh, changed an entire region, land, people, all for the sake of maturing his children, you, you, you see God from a totally different perspective. 
There, there is this physical darkness happening for three hours. And, 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 and because of this, we have to start questioning, what is it? Why, why is that significant? Uh, anytime we see the number three, uh, we do have to remind ourselves that this particular number is, is, is uh, um, uh, uh, prophetic in nature, um, that the idea is we see this particular number uh, being shared quite a few times in terms of threes, right? Uh, the number of perfection and completeness. Uh, we see birth, life, and death. We see beginning, middle, and end. We see Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the sin, the blood, the atonement. This last one, if you look, the, these are, 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 are three stages, right? And, and in every single one, we, we, we celebrate these as different stages of a cycle. So, so when we speak with regards to perfection and completeness, again, sometimes uh, uh, I feel like we have to constantly reiterate, um, perfection is, is not a, a feeling. Uh, completion is not a positive experience. It just is what it is. It's something coming to the end of its cycle and or purpose. And normally, if there's something about the system of God, then there are three stages that can be marked. So we have three hours of darkness. In the six hours of the day where it should be the brightest, the idea is the land goes dark. Jesus is being crucified. The entire experience is horrible. And, and now, uh, 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 if you can imagine all, all the sensations of seeing the Savior of the world being crucified, him being ridiculed, everyone you know lashing out uh, uh, statements, calling for him to save himself if you're the king of the Jews, uh, uh, um, constant insults, and, and, and now the land is dark. Um, at, 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 at some point, the idea is um, we have to understand that what is happening in the spiritual realm at this time, we're, 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 we're sometimes so focused on, on, on what is happening at, in, in real time, right? Uh, uh, what I can see with my eyes. And, and, and the greatest problem that I believe the enemy has become an expert at is, is distracting disciples uh, uh, so well so well distracting disciples so well that we are only concerned with the life we see in front of us and we do not realize that we worship a god who is a spirit that there are heavenly hosts that 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 that, that move in spirit that there are principalities of evil that are moving across that this is a spiritual war and and if you live your life consistently consistently thinking that somehow it has little or nothing to do with you, then, then the question there it lies is, why do you think you are a Christian? Uh, if you believe in Jesus just so you can get your ticket to heaven, um, then the challenge and or question on my end is, how, how do you believe in something you've never seen Enough so that the, for the rest of your life, you're willing to stake your death and eternity on, on something you said, not necessarily something you believe or something that we see as evidence, but just words. I, I, that's my question. So much so that I would tell you that throughout the word, what we do see are expectations, behaviors, transformative experiences, mindset changes. Uh, all of these are called for there to be the fruit of what it is to see the life of someone who now has a Christian faith, who is building a, a working experience in knowing Jesus Christ and following after the Father. So darkness. It's dark in the world. That what's happening in the spirit? I, I want us to understand that at this time, uh, um, a, a spiritual darkness is is also occurring, and and this is really important because at some point, um, w w what I am saying is that the the same thing that's happening in the physical realm is happening in the spiritual realm. Uh, we generally recognize these um, connective uh, movements um, as, as positive experiences. And I'm going to use this as an example. When Jesus is being baptized, um, the idea is the word tells us that, that, that the heavens opened up, right? And a voice declared, this is my son. 
right? And then, and then we understand the image, right? This dove that is representative and reflective of the Holy Spirit uh, 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 ascends upon Jesus. And, and, and if we've seen any kind of artistry or any kind of rendition, right? It's this beautiful uh, 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 beam of, of sunlight that's coming down as Jesus is standing in the rear of the, uh, of the river. And this dove is kind of either on the background or, or off on the side. And, and, and so we realize, oh, look at this, right? The Son, the Father, and the Spirit. Um, right now we're in spiritual darkness. Uh, Jesus is being crucified. The Father is watching all of this. And the entire realm of heaven and the kingdom is silent. Because that, that is what is experienced in darkness, silence. Uh, um, people who express, uh, um, I don't hear God, you, it's because you're in darkness. Anytime you're looking for something, you're asking, you're seeking, but you're, you're doing it amiss, the word says. You, 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 you do not know Jesus as Savior. You do not know him as Lord. You only know him by name. So you, you think you're praying, but you're meditating. You think you're praying, but you're conducting a, 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 a therapy. This is all done in darkness. And, and spiritual darkness has a way of keeping somebody distracted so well that you'll continue to live the life you see in front of you and, and not realize that you're moving in spiritual darkness. Uh, Romans 12, 1 through 2 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. It is a reasonable expectation for you to live your life as a sacrifice acceptable unto God. It means that God established the acceptability. You do not sacrifice yourself and then say, look at everything I'm doing for you. No, 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 that's not the way it works. You are to live your life a sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God. You, you are not to not, not be conformed, be not conformed to this world, that, that spiritual darkness, but you are to be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove, prove, you have to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The, the reason why you have to prove it so well is because this is written for you. The good, acceptable, and perfect will of God is not only the will of God that's set for all of the kingdom, and if you want to be a member and a disciple of the kingdom, you have to follow in the ways of God, but you specifically, you specifically were created for a purpose. There is a voice inside of you. There is a cry inside of you. There are gifts inside of you. You were designed for God, to be in the service of God. And if you do not meet that power and potential to its fullest extent, then you are robbing the entire kingdom of the purpose that God has established for your life. So spiritual darkness is, is, is dangerous. It, 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 it is a dark point, not only physically, but spiritually. And, and, and today, the, 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 the church as the kingdom and the body of Christ it is suffering because too many are distracted by the problems of this world. We've become too conformed. We follow in, in, in all the popular patterns. We follow in all the popular ideologies. We follow in all the popular theories. And we have conformed ourselves to what this world believes rather than focusing on the word of God and realizing that there is a spiritual war happening and that this world is an enemy to God and then the, the word reminds us that you cannot serve two masters. I don't care how hard you think you're trying. I don't care how good a life you think you're living. You are either serving God or you are conforming to the world. So then as we talk about spiritual darkness, we, 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 we look, right? It's three hours uh, of darkness. There's a physical darkness. Uh, um, the, the realm of heaven is dark. Uh, the Lord cries out, right? 
my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Uh, I've read all kind of uh, 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 theology with regards to what it means and separation and God being a deity and just listen, pu push all that aside. Uh, we need to figure out what does this mean for me now? In the stage in life in which I exist, uh, uh, today, tonight, I, I am trying to be a, a better man of God than I was yesterday. I want to be a better man of God tomorrow. This is what I need. I I don't need theory and 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 speculation with regards to whether or not Jesus was divided in the realms of heaven. Listen, I I I need to understand how I continue to conform to this world, continue to live my life as a sacrifice unto God, and and that it is acceptable to God, because the Father is the one who establishes acceptability. So I want to talk to you about service of transformation. This is kind of an unusual term, uh, but, but, but I want to explain it to you. At some point, Romans 12, 1 and 2 tells us that we are to live our bodies uh, uh, as a sacrifice, right? That, that the transformation has to happen in our mind. At some point, the reason why Paul is writing this to the Romans is because that's where the, 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 uh, um, the transformation begins. There's a revelation with regards to what our mind believes is the way of God. When we have believed that because of the knowledge shared with us, when we follow the gospel, when we follow the ways of Jesus, now the idea is I'm supposed to live my life as a sacrifice unto God. This is what we mean by service that you, the way you live life is a service unto God. You are either, either living life in a, a servitude to the Lord, meaning that you're following the commandments, you're obeying the principles of the kingdom. You live seeking God every day. And because you live life like this, there's a transformative experience that's happening. Every single time you talk to God, every single time you pray, every single time you study the word. The reason we believe that this happens, has to happen every day is because you, you are coming from a programming and a mindset where we, we have to safely assume uh, we've been taught everything wrong. And until you have taken the time to get into the word of God, study it for yourself, connect with people who are following after God's own heart, connect with people who have a passion to want to know the word because the word is Jesus. When you have this particular level of connection, now you're living a life of service of transformation. If you're living the life of service of transformation, this is great because then the idea is I am constantly transforming as I serve God. And this is exactly what God is expecting as reasonable service. Now, I'm going to be plain with you. Uh, for those who are living their life as a constant service of transformation, uh, you're probably considered an extremist, a Jesus freak, right? That was an old term that was thrown around a lot. A holy roller, your uh, a Bible thumper, I don't know, all, all these little uh, phrases, right? But the idea is this, you're too much. You're too much and this world can't relate to you and can't connect with you and uh, uh that's just that, that's not how uh, people are going to come to the lord listen um we do not establish how people come to god it is the mercy and grace that allows the opportunity for people to come to god the blood of jesus the 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 faith and the belief is now what opens the door to salvation. My responsibility and my acceptable, my reasonable service is just to preach the gospel. That's it. I am to make disciples. That's, that's my calling. Uh, uh, Jesus didn't call for me to make sure that everyone goes to heaven. Uh, Jesus didn't call me to make sure that everyone feels good about God. Jesus didn't call me to share anything that is popular and conforming to the world of Christianity today. That's not what we were called to do. Instead, we have been called to tell this world, uh, you're evil. Your heart is evil. Everything about you is evil. Your mother and father were evil. Uh, uh, and, and, and it's time to repent and seek God. N now, let's put on our 
happy faces and and let's live a life of the service of transformation that God expects from all of his people. Amen. Isn't that great? It really is a great story. But at some point, the idea is that everyone is brutally offended if I tell you, you live life wrong. If I tell you that there are certain behaviors and certain things that are sin and they should not be practiced, uh, I am bad and producing hate speech for telling you that you're living life wrong. Meanwhile, you, you continue to live in darkness and your heart has a hole in it and your mind and, and, and everything about you is, is disconnected. You, you have no sense of peace or true understanding of what love is. And despite all the memes and pictures and, and experiences that you constantly have to share to prove to yourself that you're living some kind of life that's worth anything, uh, it's all lies. And you have mastered to create the same distractions that the devil has created in order to ensure that you do not pay attention to your spiritual well-being. Instead, you keep on focusing on your body here, your finances here, your life here, your career here, your family here. And I'm telling you, all of this is coming to an end. What we understand from the word of Jesus tonight, what we understand when, when Jesus is saying, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Is that we have entered what, what is the second stage uh, 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 of the plan of God. Remember, I, I was telling you, the, the, the will of God is not only what God expects throughout the entire kingdom, meaning what he has written in, inside of uh, uh, um, his will. His will is the established will, right? And then there's also these individual responsibilities and kingdom assignments that we're given. Uh, we are in step two of the plan of God. And what I mean by that is that at some point, God knew that this was going to happen, that his son would have to be sacrificed, that the perfect lamb would have to be shed. That particular blood would be needed in order to rewrite a covenant. But in this particular covenant, the father would now connect and bring his children back into his presence. And we're in step two. Uh, uh, we're in step two because what lies ahead of us is the end of this world. Uh, what lies ahead of us is judgment. When, when all of this happens, there's a lot that, that, that occurs both in the physical. At, at some point uh, in the temple of God, where we understand the presence of God uh, 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 dwelled with the people of Israel, uh, um, the uh, veil that, that, that would separate the Holy of Holies was ripped. And it says that it was ripped from the top all the way down. Again, th this is uh, 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 our physical evidence that a spiritual change had occurred, a different stage, all within this cycle, because again, remember, God moves in threes. Right. So watch this. Second Peter three, eight and ten. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. All should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat and the earth also and the works therein shall be burned up. So what, what lies ahead of us is what will complete this cycle of God. What is the will of God? And what's important for us to understand is that at some point, Jesus is crying out. And, and, and this crying out was an initiation. Remember, Jesus is in complete, 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 complete control. Uh, it, it would be our mistake if we think that Jesus in any way, shape or form is a victim in any of this. Uh, Jesus is not a victim to anybody. The reason why the last seven phrases are so precise is because Jesus is taking care of everything, right? 
uh, whenever I travel and, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm having to leave my family, I, I, I want to ensure that they have everything necessary. Everything necessary to survive until I return. Jesus is coming back. We, we are merely in a stage, in a cycle of the will of God. And the darkness that was expressed and sensed and felt and the spiritual darkness occurring at this time uh, still moves forward here on this earth. Uh, don't let the confusion of the sun disturb you. Th this world is dark. In order to tap outside of the darkness, we have to be able to have the spirit dwell with us. This is why we establish a faith and a maturity in Jesus Christ. Because as soon as we do that, we now have the spirit of God. And the spirit of God allows us to speak to God. Amen. Um, I, I want us to understand that we, we, we have not experienced tr true darkness, right? Um, the, the, despite everything you've gone through in life, and, I, and you might have had some horrible experiences, um, what, what, what we have not experienced is, is complete darkness, a complete removal from the presence of God. And it is not something that for any saint now you will ever experience, praise God. But there are many um that this time is, is is awaiting them and that is not the desire of our lord the desire of our lord is, is that all will come but i believe that those who are disciples need to do their part in living that service of transformation in, in order for that to happen matthew 27 47 we're going to wrap up some of them that stood there when they heard that they said this uh this man calleth for elias I bring this up because it is interesting. Um, the world has gone dark. You're crucifying uh, the Son of God. Um, everybody knows about the conflict between um, the, the the Pharisees and 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 those ruling over Israel uh, and how they are using the Roman system and 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 this particular type of. Uh, uh, justice and, and murdering um, as a sign and a symbol to everybody, right? Uh, um, this is the, the Pharisees and, and, and the religious leaders believing that they have won. This was their goal. This was their plan. Their will was to kill Jesus because they believed that he, you know, uh, uh, um, was blasphemy, right? And, and despite Jesus's constant uh, uh, um, uh, you know, attempt to get them to understand, and some were convinced. So, so, some, uh, uh, with even within the Pharisees, uh, um, do believe, and, and they remove themselves from from the core structure, which still aims to kill Jesus. And they did it; they were successful. And the entire world is going dark, and still, in front of their own eyes, they still see and say, this man call it for Elias. I, I say that because at some point, how much more darkness does anyone need to experience? How much more pain do you need to go through? How, how many more days of isolation and, and depression and, and do you need that you're gonna keep on running to the arms of people here on earth. You're gonna keep on seeking the philosophies of you know, wise people here on earth. You're gonna keep on following and conforming to this world. How much more darkness do you need before you will surrender, turn your life over to Jesus and, and start to live a life according to the will of God, learning the principles of the kingdom, connecting with those who have a passion and a heart after God, Forgiving, collecting the forgiveness of Christ, forgiving others so you release yourself from that pressure, entering into the paradise with Christ and understanding the peace of God and forming those spiritual connections that are healthy for you to learn how to be a disciple. This is where we're at. Matthew 27, 54. Now when the centurion and they that were with him watching Jesus saw the earthquake and those things that were done, right? They saw it. They feared greatly, saying, truly, this was the Son of God. 
So, so there are those. There are those that life's experiences and what they see bring them to understanding and a revelation that Jesus is the Son of God. And yet there are many who still, after all of this, don't see it. Jesus is the light. Uh, we crucified the light. And so darkness poured over this world, and it happened also in the spiritual warm, as, as the heavenly host looked on earth, as the Savior of the world was sent to save us, and we killed him. But it was all part of the plan. And it had to happen. And what's important here is Jesus is the light. First John 2, 8, yet I am writing you a new commandment, which is true. It's realized in him and in you because the darkness, this moral blindness is clearing away. And the true light, the revelation of God in Christ is already shining. Isn't that beautiful? The true light, the revelation of God in Christ is already shining. First Peter 2, 9, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood a dedicated nation, God's own purchased special people, that you may set forth the wonderful deeds and display the virtues and perfections of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. We, we, we are called out of darkness and the moment that those express a faith in Jesus Christ they, they are removed out of darkness. That darkness no longer exists. That spiritual darkness no longer exists. And now we are called into the light of Jesus. We remember tonight that Jesus uh, cried out after God. Because that light was being killed here on earth. But if you know this, you know anything about scripture, uh, God is not dead. You, 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 you don't kill Jesus. Jesus decides to lay down his life as a sacrifice, and those are two very different things. And meanwhile, the rest of the world moves in darkness, but we move in light. And you can have two people in this world, going through the same experience day after day, but one is doing it in darkness and one is doing it in light. And the person who's living their life going through an experience in light is doing it with the peace of God and is doing it with instruction and is doing it with comfort. What I'm trying to tell you is that two people can have cancer, but having cancer in darkness is worse. Having cancer and moving in the light of God, moving with Jesus, is a totally different experience. Neither one of them feels good or is pleasant. But there is great reward and purpose for the experiences we live if we live them in service of transformation to God. And that is the calling for tonight's word, that we remember the darkness that was expressed and, and, and shared with this world so long ago because we don't have to experience that any longer. We now move forward in the light of Jesus. We now move forward uh, 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 into his marvelous light and live our life accordingly. Father, we thank you for this word. Thank you for being the light of the world, Father. Thank you for calling us into your marvelous life, Father. Thank you for purchasing us and calling us a royal priesthood, God, for ordaining us, Lord. You cover us so well, Lord, and we appreciate all of it, Father. You are a good Father. Jesus, we thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for laying down your life for us, Lord. We thank you for each word and phrase, Lord, and as we continue through Holy Week, Lord, may this be a transformative experience for us, God that our life is not the same each and every time we reflect on your word, that this, this, this experience that takes us into a, a, a holy high Sunday, Father, let this be the moment, Father, where our faith is increased, Father, our maturity is increased, Lord. Those spiritual connections happen, Father. Everything 
It calls us according to the Spirit. Let it all happen in the name of Jesus. We pray this, amen and amen. Listen, uh, uh, we're, 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 we're moving fast. Uh, uh, um, this Holy Week experience is moving quick and each and every night, I'm just honored to be able to, to share this word with you. This Sunday, we're gonna gather for Easter and I'm telling you, uh, uh, Easter at the river is something to behold. I believe that it is a special uh, uh, time. I believe that, that the spirit lines up in a certain way and, and the word of God and the spirit of God uh, moves in such a mighty way. You're gonna wanna join us. 317 King Avenue, we're here on the south side of San Antonio, Texas. We want you to come join us. Services at 10 a.m. Uh, this Sunday. And, and tomorrow we're going to gather again, 7 p.m., to hear our next phrase. What is that next word of Jesus that we want to share with you? I'm Pastor Anthony Kazravi. Thank you so much for enjoying this experience with me. God bless you.